We've got Dead Island 2 coming to smash your PC on April 21st. Well, hopefully it doesn't. We've got a system requirements list. Let's find out how bad it is. I was also curious, would it be using Unreal Engine 4? And it is. So I'm hoping it's not a stuttery mess like some Unreal Engine 4 games are on PC. I was also curious, would it feature FSR and or DLSS? And it's looking like I have confirmation that it does ship with FSR 2, as well as contrast adaptive sharpening. However, I cannot find any evidence that it supports DLSS. Now, I, I think this is an AMD sponsored title. It did have a bundle deal with some of their GPUs. I think it's unfortunate if that's gonna continue the trend of a lot of AMD sponsored titles where they ship with FSR but not DLSS. I would like to see both. Um, I do think DLSS looks better and more people do have NVIDIA GPUs. I like that FSR 2 is in the game. I like that it supports NVIDIA GPUs as well as AMD GPUs, but I do think it's disappointing to not see DLSS available. Maybe it's there and this is just uh, not mentioning it, but uh, it is what it is. Also, this does feature both uh, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, you know, C Xbox Series and Xbox One consoles. So that should mean that hopefully at at least reduced settings, the game shouldn't be too crazy demanding because the PlayStation 4, Xbox One can play the game, albeit at 30 FPS, and the PS5, Xbox Series XX versions run at 60 FPS. Now, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the system requirements chart. Um, luckily, this is one of the uh, games that is kind of the new, newer trend with PC games where they give a more detailed system requirements chart than you used to get, where it was just minimum recommended and didn't really tell you what any of that meant. That being said, I don't think this is perfect. However, let's, let's do a few quick mentions right out the gate. Some recent games have been listing 32 gigabytes of VRAM, uh, not VRAM, uh, sorry, of RAM, as a requirement on the higher resolutions and settings, and we are not seeing that here. And in fact, the minimum is listed as 10 gigabytes. So that's dialed back compared to some other recent releases. Uh, the other thing I'll mention here is I feel like the CPUs they're listing are just whatever they happen to have in their, uh, in their systems they were testing on, because some of these are a little bit weird, um, but I think it'll be easier to talk about the GPUs first, so let's do that. However, uh, I find this chart a little bit hard to read because it's unclear if minimum means the actual graphic settings or if they're just saying the minimum requirement to play the game because it then goes up to recommended high and ultra, which could be interpreted as the graphic settings this is running at, but could also just be interpreted as like, this is the high-end experience, this is the ultra experience, because they're listing the resolution and frame rate here, uh, but they're not clearly labeling whether this is a graphic settings target above. Uh, so the minimum for 1080p 30 FPS, possibly at the minimum graphic settings, but uh, unclear if that's exactly what they mean. Uh, from the GPU perspective, we need an AMD Radeon RX 480 or a GeForce GTX 1060. They are listing cards like the 1060 as 1080p 30 FPS GPUs. Like I said, unclear if you can turn it down further from there, although the game does have FSR 2 upscaling, so we could at least play around with that. Um, now, so if I scroll down, let's find these types of GPUs. What am I looking at here? So this is the relative performance chart from Tech Power Up. And while this isn't perfect, and in different games, um, and it's, uh, comparing GPUs from generations far enough apart, this can certainly not always be accurate to the particular game you're interested in. Uh, but compared to a lot of other relative performance type charts on the internet, I find this one to be one of the best uh, in terms of both accuracy and the number of GPUs and e uh, it lists and the ease of use. So here you can click on a GPU like, let's say the RX 480 as the baseline, and then it will list uh, other GPUs as you know its percentage performance relative to the one you've clicked on. So I've set the RX 480 as the baseline, and notice that the GTX 1060 that it, that it listed alongside it in the system requirements, although this one didn't say which VRAM configuration, the 1060 came in three gigabyte versions and six gigabyte versions, there was a weird Chinese five gigabyte version too. Anyway, um, so 
that's a question mark. So the system requirements list isn't perfect. Um, but anyway, the GTX 1016 RX 480 are right about here. So if you're wondering if your GPU can stack up against that, but you're not one of the ones listed, you could scroll up and see things that are at least close, you know, but a little bit weaker, like the RX 470, GTX 970, R9 390, RX 570. Cards like this would be close. The GTX 1650 is certainly below uh, the minimum spec listed here, so is the RX 6400 and the Intel Arc A380. Now, I'm not saying that you probably couldn't play the game using those, um, but you're certainly below the minimum listed spec, so you know, probably below 1080p using FSR upscaling, that kind of a thing, uh, if you're wanting to hit good frame rates. But, you know, system requirements charts aren't always perfect anyway. Um, so anyway, if you had something better than this, you might have cards like the 6500 XT that's about on par, maybe a little bit better, 1650 Super, getting a little bit stronger from here. The 1660 would certainly be faster, the 980 Ti, and... Um, and here we have the RTX 3050, GTX 1070, definitely getting uh, noticeably faster here. So where is our next step up in our list? The next step up in our list shows the uh, Radeon RX 6600 XT and the RTX 2070 Super as still on 1080p, but at 60 FPS. Now again, it's saying recommended, whether that's a graphic setting or they're you know, just not specifying the graphic setting I don't know, but they are saying you could at least play the game at 1080p 60fps on those types of GPUs. So if we scroll up, continue scrolling up, we can see that there is a large performance jump uh, from that 1080p 30 up to the 1080p 60. And if it is around 30fps jumping to around 60fps at similar graphic settings, you would expect an almost doubling of performance. And that is what we get going up to the 6600. And then actually we're looking for the 6600 XT version, which is faster. And hey, look, it is showing about 218% uh, of the performance, which it would, would again would be about 2.18 times faster. That would allow for both an increase to uh, the frame rate from 30 to 60 and maybe some graphic settings updates, although the RTX 2070 is listed alongside it, which is a bit weaker. If I click on the RTX 2070, uh, you can see that generally the 6600 XT is a little bit faster, but these are in the same kind of ballpark. If you have an RTX 3060, an ARC A750, a GTX 1080 Ti, ARC A770, you're kind of in this same ballpark. Uh, 2060 Super, RX 6600 non-XT, a little bit weaker, RTX 2060, a little bit weaker, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of ballpark we're in for 1080p 60fps, and it does seem like a reasonable jump from 30fps to 60fps with an almost doubling of the performance. Now, if you want to be playing at 1440p 60fps, which were either might indicate the at high settings or might just be calling this a high-end PC setup, it's unclear from this chart, wish they had clarified, we would be jumping up to the 6750 XT from AMD or the RTX 3070 uh, from NVIDIA. So if, if we maybe set our 6600 XT as our baseline here and then kind of scroll up this chart, you can see where we've got to go. So the 6750 XT is about 23% faster. So not a massive jump going from 1080p 60 to 1440p 60. Uh, again, unclear what exactly the graphic settings are there. In the RTX 3070, they're listing at about 30, uh, 31% faster. Now, I think on the latest drivers, the 6750 XT is actually closer to or even slightly faster than 3070. So I think this does make sense. Like I said, this chart is not perfect. And you can find your GPU kind of uh, nearby here. So if you're at a RX 6800, 6800 XT, 3070 Ti, uh, you're definitely a bit above what it's listing there. Now, once you jump into this... Uh, higher end class, I think we're getting into where they're listing um, for the Ultra 4K 60. Now, they are listing a Radeon RX 6950 XT and a GeForce RTX 3090. Now, I'm curious if the 3090 here is recommendation is at all VRAM related or if it's just kind of a random sort of recommendation. Uh, because, for example, if you uh, look at the 3080 compared to the 3090, 
it's not a massive performance difference. It's just 14% or so. So, and again, comparing the 6800 XT, which was a lot cheaper to the 69, uh, 69, what they go with the 50, yeah, 6950 XT. Um, Again, not a massive performance uh, jump there, and, and these GPUs would have been a lot cheaper, so curious if you actually end up needing those. But that's where we're at on the GPU side of things, so it looks like cards in our latest generation, uh, like the 4070 Ti, 7900 XT, XTX, and 4090 should be delivering good 4K performance. Um, as long as VRAM isn't getting in the way, because again, the one reason it could be a 3090 uh, is for the 24 gigabytes of VRAM. 6950 XT has 16 gigabytes of VRAM and such, but uh, I don't know, difficult to say if that will end up being a factor. Now, last thing I'll end with here is the CPUs, which I just find are a little bit weird, like I said at the beginning of the video. So the AMD FX9590 and the i7-7700HQ. So uh, the 7700HQ is a four core, eight thread CPU that's listed as a mobile CPU when I picked it. Oh, I wasn't actually super familiar with this one, so I looked it up and I'm finding it listed as a mobile CPU. Um, so that just seems a little bit odd to list here and it's from 2017. And the AMD CPU they're listing it against is the FX9590, which was eight core, eight thread CPU from 2013. Um, I don't know, that just seems like a really weird pairing of like a mobile CPU from 2017 from Intel versus a high-end old desktop CPU from 2013. Just seems strange. Anyway, uh, jumping up to the 10, the, but I guess if you have CPUs in those, uh, you know, ranges, you could probably get 30 FPS. This is where I'm just wondering if they just happen to have some random test systems and those just happen to be the uh, oldest, weakest AMD CPU they have and the oldest, weakest Intel CPU that they have. That's kind of my question mark on that. Uh, they just were able to test on those and confirm that you could get 30 FPS, but not 60. Jumping up to 60 FPS, we're seeing the Ryzen 5 5600X and the I Intel i9-9900K. If you want a refresher on what those are, the 5600X is fairly new, six core, 12 thread uh, CPU from uh, November of 2020. And the i9-9900K is an eight core 16 thread CPU uh, from uh, October of 2018. Now jumping up to the 1440 60, 60 FPS, and here's another thing that seems weird. If you're just changing resolution, the CPU requirements should not increase. If you're changing the graphic settings, there are certain graphic settings that can affect the CPU. Um, uh, especially if you're enabling ray tracing or something like that, but I haven't seen anything about ray tracing here. So I don't know. Again, the CPU jump here seems strange to me. I wonder if these just happen to be the CPUs that they put in the build, because if you can get 60 FPS at 1080p, you should also be able to get 60 FPS at 1440p on the same CPUs. Anyway, that being said, the 7700X is your eight core 16 thread CPU from, well, the end of 2022. This is a brand new high-end CPU from AMD and the 12600KF. And again, this is where I feel like it just happens to be the CPUs that they had in their test systems. Because why specifically list the KF version? If you're not, not sure uh, what that means. So the 12600K, K means it can overclock and F means it does not have the integrated GPU, which wouldn't be being used anyway. So the fact that they would bother to list KF instead of just K seems strange to me. Um, but anyway, that's a pretty new uh, desktop GPU from 2021 uh, from Intel. And again, I'm just getting the feeling like they're just listing whatever CPUs happen to be in their, uh, in their test system. Jumping up to Ultra 4K 60, again, if we're at the same graphics settings, going up to 4K resolution should not require a higher end CPU. And the 7900X from AMD is not usually faster in gaming than a 7700X. The 7700X is eight core 16 thread. The, the 7900X uh, is, uh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. The 7900X, um, I, clicked on, I clicked on the Intel CPU, not the AMD CPU. <laughs> Here we go. The 7900X Ryzen 9 is 12 core 24 thread, but same basic speed as the, um, as the Ryzen 7 that they listed before that, again, from this 2022 lineup. 
So unless it somehow is doing something at these ultra settings that needs more than eight core 16 thread, which is incredibly rare in games, and I really don't think Unreal Engine 4 has, I've ever seen Unreal Engine 4 actually need more than eight cores and 16 threads, this just seems like nonsense and what happened to be in their test system. They're also listing the i7-13700K 16 core 24 thread CPU. Um, anyway, eight of those cores being the, uh, the performance gaming cores. Are you guys interested in this game? Um, I could benchmark it when it comes out and, and see how it actually performs or not. We'll see the interest level in this video and what you guys say in the comments. I hope all of you have an excellent day.